Hey everyone, we're here back at the piano and today looking at Bach Sinfonia number no. 8. So the inventions in Sinfonia by Bach are just great building blocks on uh, part of the building process that you'll do in learning how to play. You learn how to play a lot of music by Bach and they're really core in that. So when you get to around level 7-ish, level numbers are very arbitrary, you start to look at some of these symphonias. So we're going to look at the number one, uh, number eight, I'm sorry, in F major, which, as you may have noticed, the symphonias will have the same keys as the invention. So invention number eight is in F major, and symphonia number eight is also in F major. <laughs> I always recommend get the Henley edition if you don't already have it. Unfortunately, the internet copies of this piece are, are really bad, okay? So I think if you're going to use an internet copy, use the one that has the least things added to it. So, you know, when it comes to staccatos and slurs and accents and things like that that Bach didn't write, I don't recommend using those ones. I personally like to have the cleanest copy I can get. Uh, let's see, we have to replug that thing in, I think. And there is one on IMSLP that's kind of, you know, uh, mediocre, but really don't waste your time with it. You know, go for the, that's uh, this one I see, go for the Henley edition and that's it. You know, because this is really terrible to read. The whole thing is on less than one page and it should be on two, okay? And the resolution is, is really, really bad. So again, don't waste your time with this. I will not really want to use this today, but I might just to draw a few things. Like again, how do we articulate this thing, for example? So our subject is this, and we'll have it reoccurring in three different voices. Right, so here is the, the bass line, and this is the alto line, and then the soprano line comes here, and then the bass line has that same theme or subject. So what happens in the first few bars is that we have this subject appearing in each of our three voices and we want to bring it out, okay? That's the most important thing is that we hear it. So that would sound something like this. So we clearly heard it three times. When, it, when you don't, it sounds like this. This is if you don't bring it out, which you shouldn't do. Here's the bad way. We didn't really hear that so clearly that those three times. They're there. I mean, we heard it, but we, you didn't show it if you do that. Okay? When it comes to articulation in this piece, <clears throat> it's great when you have a way of articulating the subject so that every time it shows up, you do it the same way. Then it becomes even more recognizable and the whole piece becomes more homogenous. And here's how I recommend doing it. Take your ta da -di. so we'll have this like this, and then yup, up, bum, separate those two notes. This is how I do it, okay? Ta da 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 pa pa pum, and that's it. So. Okay, so that means the last three notes, this one, this one, and this one, are short, right? Now there's a few other ways of doing it, but I think this is probably the most simple, okay? And then if you're really into it, add the trill. And that kind of brings another feature of this subject that we'll have every time we hear it. Uh, for the most part, not always, but it's there, you know. We 
can add that trill in there. Uh, but again, we, you might not do it everywhere. In the Henley edition, they write it in a bunch of places. I'm just going to kind of do it a bit like that for today. So now we have our articulation and we bring out the, those three different subjects in each of the three different voices. And on top of that, we'll give it a certain shape and that'll give it another feature that, that makes it more recognizable again, right? So um, when we don't give it a shape, usually this is how it's played. So what's missing is a little aim for the D. So I think that's, that's uh, acceptable. And I think the first one is a bit more than, and this one, a little smaller, right? So the bigger part and the smaller part in volume we're talking about here for the size. So now you do that all three times and it sounds something like this. One of the suggestions I can give for this piece is whenever the subject is in the bass, really bring it out because that's when we have a harder time to hear it. If it's on the top, it's kind of hard not to hear it. But usually the problem you'll have when it's on the top is forgetting to shape it the way we just said. So instead of going you probably go right? So we need that Okay, so there we have it. First time Second time Third and then once you get here, do a little less. Come down that bar three, just put a little decrescendo at the end of it, because then we're going to build up. Level two, level three, and then we have that subject here. Uh, Sorry about that. It's the morning and we haven't warmed up. Okay, so there we have that. And then we might add the trills to that as well. It'll sound something like this. It starts to get a little busy, but uh, that, that's kind of neat. And this is a bit on the fast side. All right, now. Just be consistent with that in the way you articulate it. That's the way that makes sense to me. I know, I think some people do something like that. Um, I don't like slurring octaves like this in Bach generally, but sometimes it can sound good. So the way I like to do this is. Um, And then we got to pick something to listen to. We have ta -da -da, da -da -da -da. so that's one and a two, three, and a four. I'm sorry, one and a two, three and a four and a two. Or we have the alto line one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so so it's kind of like we have. That little scale that's going up in an ascending motion in those two voices, the soprano and the alto, and a, a general increase in volume from bar three, uh, I'm sorry, from bar four, five, up until you get to that subject that comes back in the left hand. three places here in this piece where we end up playing uh, six double sixteenths in the right hand and they're probably the trickiest parts 
Okay, so that's bar six right there. And then we have it again in bar 13. And then you'll have it again in bar, yes, in bar 17, but it kind of doesn't count because you'll grab that with the left hand. So the other place you really have this challenge is in bar 22. Okay, so, all right, let's go through a bit more of this. We finish this section in C major. Okay, so we had the first three bars were just to establish the subject in each voice. Then we had a harmonic sequence. And we've modulated to C major. Now we start the next section. Take it a little bit less. So that's... can be a little bit more. So you see we have a little bit less here. And then a bit more here. Now again we have a subject in the bass. So we want to bring that one out. So that, this whole middle part of the piece, we kind of have that subject coming in succession over and over, repeating from one voice to the next. In the first three bars, or two and a half bars, now we only have two voices, but they're going back and forth. So you see how that's repeating constantly. We have it here, 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 then here, and here in the left hand. Now the alto voice comes in. Then we have it in the bass. And in this bar 12, I like to detach okay I think that just sounds eloquent and that's how I like to do that yeah this would look something like this where is that in this thing here so we'd have a little and a little, you know, staccato. I would kind of rather do them like this. They're not necessarily staccatos, but you see, it just brings out the It brings out a few things in there that I think are worth showing. Uh, we didn't talk about the polyphony in bar three. When you do have the left hand, you also have it's nice if we can hear that a bit okay and there's a lot of it coming up in this section as well I jump here to five it depends if you use a tiny little bit of pedal and Bach if you use it a little bit, but we don't, can't really tell that you're using it, then it's fine. Otherwise, we detach that. Now, Bach writes this, so we keep that G. Okay, so this section ends now in D minor which is the minor relative of F major. So we had F major, 
and then we modulate it to C major, which is the dominant of F major. And then we've modulated now through a bunch of keys, almost like a, a short development with all those harmonic sequences, but finishing in D minor. Okay, which is our minor relative of the original key. Now this part here, of course you have to take this with the left hand. And then you can either do two or thum thum thum. It's not a bad thing. Now we have ta da ta ta da ti ta da ta ta da dum ta da ti ta da dum. We have that little beginning part, the fur, the head of the subject that repeats again in succession, even sometimes in su succession in the same voice. Ta da dum pa da dum ta da dum ba da yum da 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 da. B flat major now this time. which is our subdominant key. All right. So ta -da -da. after this, we can relax that. You can decrescendo that first half of bar 15, giving a nice accent on the G. So we have a little bit left over here. And then take this a little less. That's kind of a nice part in this B flat major key. But going back there, bar 15, 16, 17, there's a lot of long notes that have to be held. See, we have that B flat. Make sure you hear. And then this G has to be held. And then the C. So what we don't want, if you don't hold these notes, it'll sound like this. Or if you hold them not quite long enough. As opposed to. It's just a little richer. See, we have that F. F and the E flat, which is another uh, retard, a late note. Now we have the D in the left hand with that nice dissonance. The mistake I see all the time is that people hold the long notes, but not quite long enough. And Bach is always making them go over the bar into the next chord to create just a, a richer sound. Baroque music is incredibly rich and, and dissonant in that sense. So, uh, for example, someone would do this. They would hold this D, and they would let go of it there. But it just needs to be held a little longer. See? So we have that nice dissonance. It's almost a cluster. So then bar 19, come down a little bit again. Come down to mezzo piano. Here, because we're going to build this up again, just like we did in the beginning. Level 1, level 2, level 3. And then the left hand takes over again. We have ti da din dun ti da 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 dum. I think that's a subject that pretty much everyone misses, right? So again, level one, level two, getting more, and then and then we have it for the very last time. This time in the top voice. A bunch of little polyphony in those last two bars that need to be paid attention to. So if you look, if you compare bars 4, 5 and bars 9, uh, 20, 21 or, or, or something like that, they're in a different order, right? We had in the early part of the beginning, we had the top first and then the alto following. 
now we have the opposite. We have the alto line leading. Then the top one. You see? So alto, soprano, alto, soprano, alto. So, so instead of maybe this is a suggestion. Bring out the soprano the first time. A little bit more than the alto, and then do the opposite when you get to bar 20. Bring out the alto voice more. But what's important is that we hear the circle of fifths. It's not a circle of fifths in store, it's an ascending sequence. Right, so we have we want to listen to it with that ri harmonic rhythm and not just you see then it sounds like we're we're missing half the chords, or we're not feeling half of the chords. So maybe that will bring it out if you do that. So maybe that's a very good idea. <laughs> There's that subject in the in the bass line. Bring it out. It's the one we need to hear uh, a little more because it's in the bass line. So bring it out nicely. And how do we slow down at the end? Um, good question. I think. Make sure that last subject also comes out. So we had it twice. We had it in the left hand. And then in the top line as well. Okay. We were talking about the pacing. Okay. I think from there, something like that. It can get a little broader, those last two bars. Last two bars? More like the last bar plus half of the second last bar. Something like that. So, you know, how would I count this? Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, da, da, da. I have to count this in eight. One, two, three, four, 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 one. Something like that. Okay, there we have it. Bach Symphonia number eight. That's a fun one. That's a really lively, upbeat one. So, and you know, it's not the hardest one to start, so that's good. Hi, Moy. Thank you for the super chat. That's cool. I'm not used to super chat. That is that is neat. I'm gonna have to figure up my YouTube game here. So <laughs> thanks for that, Moy, and everyone else who's listening. Piper, uh, let me fix this little thing so I can read the whole thing. <clears throat> Love to stay, but work calls. Picking up piano again. Rock Mama Musical number four. Okay, good, great. All right, so thank you to everyone watching. Happy practicing, and well, see you in the next video. Take care, happy new year.